David, you've been working with the festival it, well as long well, as I have. Gosh, well, it's been how long? It's I've started well 14 over, years yeah, ago. Yeah, well so. over 10 years. Yeah. And so uh, you're one of the guys that actually puts the festival together. That is correct. Uh, you and a, a, a fabulous team of veterans that have been working a long time. We talked to Caroline Labresco oh, a, little, a couple of days ago, but there's eight of you? Eight There are eight feature programmers, and right. we have a whole set of shorts programmers as well. So how many films did you see this year? I saw probably about 500 feature-length films myself. Right. So how vigorous do those... Uh, 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 arguments or discussions get I mean because I'm sure that every one of you as you start championing certain films you're really trying to sell them to your cohort is that absolutely that kind of, yeah. so the, those are the those are the funnest moments because yeah. but but often you know a film will have a better chance of getting into our festival uh, if some people are passionate about it and others really don't like it at all mm -hmm. than the ones that we all just kind of like right. passion is what it's all about. Well, and, and that's what brings it out in the festival, right? That's I mean, if true. everybody seems to think, eh, this is okay, then, right. well, I could go to the movie any day of the week and go yes. see an okay movie, right? But we that's want something true. extraordinary here. Um, well, great. I, I, any films that uh, have, you know, we were a few days into the festival, and I know that you you handle a lot of the Q&As. Yeah. You're running around from theater to right. theater introducing directors and cast yes. and things like that, then you run to the next one. What's sticking yeah, out for you? Which what, is what why kind of I look like I've been yeah. run over by a bulldozer, <laughs> but yeah, because I gotta have. Uh, let me see. Well, first of all, I, I did the intro and the Q&As for our, our Salt Lake Gala of the, the documentary Mitt. Mm -hmm. And I am a lefty liberal, but I spent the evening with the Romneys. Uh, we had dinner and the governor, and the Romneys are the most lovely people in the world. And this film... G this film puts the face of the man, not the politician, and mm -hmm. that's what Greg Whiteley, the filmmaker, has accomplished. And uh, it, it's, I, it, it's really intimate, mm -hmm. but it's really powerful, too. And, it's, and it's, we were talking about this before we came on, but politics being what they are, uh, we always see a candidate for the way they're spun, the way their handlers have dressed them and made them stand, and, yes. and all the little, you know, z zing lines that everybody's been told to give it's, it's kind of a shame we don't get to see perhaps this portrait during right. the campaign as yeah. opposed to after and then on the opposite end of the spectrum the next day I did the intro in the Q&A for the case against eight which is mm -hmm. a documentary uh, documentary about the fight to overturn prop eight in mm -hmm. what that went to the Supreme Court that was one of the most extraordinary moments that Q&A in my 14-year history. Well, how could it not be? I mean, as charged as this subject is, and, and, and from what I understand, the documentary isn't necessarily about, well, it, it tells the story of, of, of the actual case, but it really does put a human face on it. Absolutely, and there were, there were not cameras allowed in the courtroom, so these filmmakers were like a fly on the wall. They put us in the driver's seat, and what was one interesting moment during that Q&A is Ted Olson, who was one of the two lead att attorneys, a woman asked him to read, she had her constitution with her, mm -hmm. and she asked, my, I don't have a question I have a favor to ask. Could you read from the 14th Amendment? And she handed it to him, and he ver he remember, he knows the 14th of Amendment. So read it. It was it was incredible. Yeah. Good. What? Anything else? Um, uh, there's a film called Captivated: The Trials of Pamela Smart, mm -hmm. which we're you know we're doing a, sh a show right now, a, a television show, I guess, and uh, that film makes me rethink everything I've ever seen on TV, how the media sculpts our, sculpts the truth for us, mm -hmm. certainly journalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's really, really extraordinary. The filmmaker, Jeremiah Zagar, yeah. destined for greatness. Well, and it speaks to mid as well, right? I mean, yes. it, it's the difference between seeing things for the way they are and the seeing things the way that the machine tells us to yes. see them. Yeah. Well, and that's what a good documentary yes. does, right? Uh, well, you know, of course, you know, the Sundance is filled with documentaries. We're kind of famous for documentaries yeah. and things like that, too. Another another thing that you do is you write and produce the award show that at is, the end of the year. Tell is, us a little bit what's going to happen well, this coming weekend. it's going to be a really fun one because our MCs, our husband and wife team, Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally, and quite honestly, I'm not going to have to write too much for them because yeah. they're, I'm not, they're way funnier than I could ever even dream of being. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. But we have like some great guest uh, presenters as well. Um, uh, William H. Macy and mm -hmm. his wife Felicity Huffman are booked, mm -hmm. and we have uh, some asks out yet too, and we've got some high-profile jurors who will be up on that stage too, including Tracy Chapman, Leonard Moulton. So it's a uh, so because Sundance veterans coming back yes, to help out. Yes, yes. Uh, this this show is kind of you know the the award ceremony. It used to be something that was just kind of an afterthought, you know, years and years ago. Yeah. But now it's really kind of taken on oh, a life yeah, of its own. Oh yeah, it sure has. So what's Cooper going to dress? Up? You can't. Oh, I, uh, I I never you know, know. For those of you, John Cooper usually comes out dresses something or does something 
this, very uncooper esque <laughs> This is his 25th year, right. you know, and uh, he used to do cartwheels on uh -huh. the stage across. I and so I wrote a little script for the um, artist at the table opening, and it, his the voice of God had talked about that. We were poking fun at him, so he did a cartwheel during the dress rehearsal just to prove that he could still do it. And, and, <laughs> and can, he can you divulge he, whether or not he can? He still can. The guy still looks like he's 30. Come on. Well, he's, he's, Yes. Okay. <laughs> He's my boss. I'll go with you. On just that not, one. I'm throwing you a bone. Just, just not. Okay. Thank you. Nakoop is great. And, he, and, and, and you know, just we, you know, Terry and I were talking about leading up to the festival. You know, some of the changes with the festival, and uh, I think he's really put a great face. Yeah. Uh, to the festival as it's evolved, because of course it has to, right? It, it has to, and that's you know we we have to remain vital or else forget mm -hmm. it, and we have, so that feels really great. So what do you got going on today? More of the uh, same? more intros. Uh, I think you have Edith Belsberg coming in. Mm -hmm. I'm introducing the premiere of her extraordinary film, Watchers of, of the Sky. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I don't know. I have I can't look at more than one or two because it, it, it gets overwhelming. There's so many of them. Sure. But. Well, and the nice thing is, is obviously as a senior programmer, yeah. you've seen all these films before, yes. so now it's just the logistics of making yes. sure that they get shown. Um, last night, yesterday were a couple of amazing events. Um, the premiere of Life Itself, mm -hmm. with the Steve James film about Roger Ebert. We, str I did the Q and A, and it was. Um, it, it was live streamed, and it, it was an incredibly emotional Q and A. So that was really, really amazing. And uh, Amir Barlow's film Happy Valley mm -hmm. is blowing people away because uh, he's surprising us too. Because the he um, the subjects he got for that film were. Really, yeah, really and of course, intense. as timely as that yeah. whole thing is, it's yeah. going to be interesting as yes. well. Well, we've got Watcher of the Sky coming up. We're going to be talking to the oh, filmmakers great. on this show coming up, but we want to thank you, David Courier, for thank, uh, thank being you, here, Jeff. senior programmer uh, for the Sundance Film Festival. He wears 19 different hats that we don't have time to tell you. I mean, throughout the year, we I mean, should have a yearly date. We really should. <laughs> I always look forward to it. We got more in the can coming up after this. Stick around.